Welcome back to Other People's Lives. I'm your host, Joe Sanagato. I'm your host, Greg Dybeck. And before we get into this week's episode, we have an exciting announcement. Oh, yeah. We have officially launched the OPL store. Yep. So now you can get some uh, some hoodies, some t-shirts, some hats, phone cases. Phone cases. A, a journal. A journal. Ooh, the a journal's going to be big. I mean, that's for you. You write and <laughs> stuff. Like, I don't write like that. I'm but, more a mug and a, and a hoodie kind of guy. Ooh, so cozy. So cozy. By the way, well, I might, might I say, these shirts are fire. And the hat is my favorite. I'm excited. We won't give it away here, but we uh, we tried some some different designs here. We kind of tried to put a, put our own spin on this. Some things that you know we think are really in line with the show. And we think you guys will like it. Yeah, and if you guys want to check it out, you can go to shop.oplshow.com uh, right now to see what is available. Also, a portion of all proceeds will go to a charity of our choosing. Yes, I'm really excited about that. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So what we'll do is at the end of the year, we will pick a charity. And like Joe said, a portion of all the proceeds uh, from anything that you buy in this store uh, we'll collect that and we'll pick a charity around the holidays. We'll let you guys know and we will donate to that. So definitely check it out, shop.oplshow.com. Mm. Anyway, uh, so we got an email. This feels really scandalous. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I feel like this An feels really scandalous. I feel like Andy Cohen about to talk to the housewives on a reunion. Oh my God. Think about it. That this is like, terrible. it's it's like reality. No one knows TV. what you're talking about yet. They saw the title. That's true. Not that we know what the title is going to be I at know, this point don't, in no, time. But Someone's cheating on their husband. So, so, yeah. so, yeah, we're speaking to someone who's actively cheating on their husband. Actively, yes. Actively. Like today. Not like I cheated, I want to talk about it. No, they like, are actively here, cheating. Yeah. They could have cheated today. They could have cheated yesterday. Who could knows? be on their way to cheat after this. <sighs> Talking about it might get them worked up. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, oh, God, got to go cheat. Uh, but what's interesting, well, we're going to stick with the format of not reading the email. We're not going to give away the plot per se. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this person who is actively cheating, I don't think it's that they're proud that they are cheating, but they claim that cheating is saving the marriage. Which is an interesting... Uh contradiction to, yeah i mean sort of uh, i mean i wouldn't say contradiction because i haven't heard her side yet but i will say that it is an interesting you know point of view there like oh yeah lying and cheating is saving my marriage right <laughs> it almost sounds like something you would tell yourself to justify cheating yeah which i mean we'll find out if that's the case yeah after that, i mean there's there's it. definitely more to it and we'll we'll let her tell the whole story and hold back any judgment right now yeah i really want to find out I, I just want to hear her side i mean i could be swayed you never know also i mean cheating just seems so difficult and time consuming and stressful like stressful hiding that stressful is the biggest thing for me like i just can't ha like how do you focus on anything when that's like happening you know uh, yeah at any moment the person you're cheating with could just blow up your spot yeah like I, and how do you say like i don't want to do this anymore then there's that risk i don't yeah, know it's, it's just, just there's no way out it's like being in a gang can't get out sorry <laughs> you just gotta ride it out i guess it's it's scary it's a it's, it's a true double life not everyone's built for it yeah no it'll be interesting to see how this is saving her marriage though yeah i mean i can't i really like right now sitting here i can't really I'm in my head. I'm like, what could she possibly say that's going to sway my opinion? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know, but let's call her and find out. Hello. Hey, how's it going? This is Greg and Joe. Hello. Hey guys, how's it going? Good. Uh, so we gave people a little background a little bit about uh you know your situation but we didn't really go into detail and read the email so 
for everyone who doesn't know, can you just kind of paint the picture of how this all started and what your relationship uh, is like with your husband and like the first time that you decided, okay, I'm going to go out and I'm going to make this move. I'm going to cheat. So can you just give like a background summary of all that? Sure. Um, so I, just to give you a background, I am married to my high school sweetheart. So we started dating actually 15 years ago tomorrow. Hmm. And we got, we got married young. I was 22 and we've been married ever since. And then two years ago, I had a, a very bad medical issue. It was life threatening. Um, I was in the hospital for two months and I had seven surgeries that, that really, honestly, it changed my entire w- way of thinking. It changed how I look alive. It's it changed my personality quite a bit. And the thing is like, I was still in physical therapy. I was going four times a week for almost a year. And then when I was done with physical therapy, and that's when they suggested that I need to see a massage therapist to get my put like maintenance on it and keep the swelling down. And it also helps with pain relief. And so I found a massage place and there was um, a guy who was certified in it. And I did specifically request a guy to be my massage therapist. And so I had a, so we do a two hour massage hour that was mostly my foot and ankle and uh, my legs. And then the rest was like a normal massage. Wait, so you, so, so, I'm, I'm sorry. So you, you went through this whole, uh, infection, uh, and everything. And then at what point did this, does this, this change your mentality on how you look at things? Like when did that sort of start to affect your marriage and how you looked at, you know, monogamy? So, okay. All right. So that kind of changed my thinking in the sense that going through what I went through and being married was very hard. My husband kind of shut down. He didn't know what to do to help me. He just saw me in pain all the time. He saw all these doctors and nurses and we'd have people at the house, you know, changing out my stuff. And he would, his way of dealing with it was drinking with the neighbors, going out and doing whatever. And I was stuck at home and I was in a wheelchair and, you know, we're both the same age, but he chose to deal with it through kind of escaping through alcohol and I, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't, I couldn't drink. I wasn't allowed to drink or whatever. So that is where the distance probably started. Hmm. So where, when did it become, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to cheat. And who was the person that you cheated with? Okay. So it kind of, it, like I said, it mostly started, through the actual, so we got through the physical part of, of my recovery. And then it was the psychological part, which was the lawsuit. And that's what made me shut down because you can't just, it's, you can't just go through that and then compartmentalize it and not feel anything different towards anybody else. So I shut down with all my relationships too, with my husband, with my daughter. And I just, I was just mad and angry at, at the world. Honestly, I was mad at what happened and he didn't know how to deal with that part of it. It was, it was intense. It was a lot of stuff that was happening that nobody really knows how to get through. Right. And um, I just want to, sorry, I just want to pull something from your email. So, uh, I, th- okay. I think we're getting, you know, an idea of this picture and, uh, mm-hmm. the multiple surgeries that you had to go through and kind of being stuck at home, stuck in a wheelchair um, your husband basically starting to distance himself. Uh, you mentioned here, you know, I mean, I guess what's interesting is this, this is your high school sweetheart. Uh, you said that you were dating since you were 16. Uh, that's a long time, (laughs) but you know, you said here that you just started getting stuck in a lot of mundane routines that the passion and excitement got lost, um, throughout this journey just to survive. So I think that's interesting. How does that, you know, when you're with someone for so long, you know, how does that start to happen? And what is the feeling when you start to recognize that, 
you know, this isn't the excitement's not there. This is the person who, you know, I maybe considered my soulmate, the person that I chose to spend the rest of my life with. I just imagine that's not easy at all. Yeah. And it's not that I feel different. And I do want to make that clear. I love my husband very much and he still is my soulmate regardless. This is, it's interesting because there's two separate feelings. I am truly in love with him. Mm-hmm. 100%. Um, but when you going through that and then not knowing how to deal with it and then the communication stops and then it's like we were both living our own separate lives, but in the same house. Right. So is it, um, I mean, how much of it is sex specifically when you say something like a mundane routine throughout, you know, the surgeries and everything? I mean, I, I guess I would imagine going through what you're going through and the pain it's, is it even possible to have sex at that point yeah i mean we did I, he he had a really high sex drive um through all of this and so you know we would just move the machines out of the way and he would lift me out of the wheelchair and throw me on the couch and we would do it but you know it it was just, you know it wasn't as often as we used to do it you know we would have sex probably three or four times a week before all this you know and then we were getting to like once every two weeks or or whatnot. It it was it was low, and then I also I wasn't the one showing him affection either. It it went both ways. So how how again? I'm just trying to get to the point where you're like, okay, this is it. Like I'm I'm gonna cheat. Like what drove you to that point? Okay, so the like I said, the the spark was gone. It we would see each other like roommates, and this has been going on for probably two years, and. I was getting my massage treatments once a week. And when I started getting my massage treatments, I had no intention ever to cheat, ever. And I always looked down on it pretty bad. Um, but there was also, the, the thing that probably led me to do this was more so me. And I had felt that there was a part of me that I had lost that I needed to rediscover. So talking to my massage therapist, you know, we had conversations that were interesting they were more risky than your casual conversations with guy friends um the guy friends i have i don't sit around well i mean sometimes but like talking about sex all the time so he would bring up sex and it sex with you specifically or just talking about sex in general like what what are some of the examples of the conversations that you would have he would just ask you know the it all started like when he was doing my massage on my, on my leg. And he's like, Oh, what are these bruises from? And he put his hands on them and immediately I felt it. And I knew that was from my husband like two nights ago when we were going at it and he threw some bruises on there. And so, yeah, he, when he touched them, it, you know, he's like, Oh, I know what you guys were doing. He's like, you like it rough, don't you? And it just, it started into this conversation of, what kind of sex I'm into and what kind of sex my husband and I have. And then he started sharing experiences about his clients and the sexual encounters he's had with them, the happy endings he's given some of them. He he went into detail about them. And yeah, when you're laying naked on a table and the lights are low and somebody's rubbing lotion all over you and talking about sex, you're going to get turned on, or at least I did. Well, yeah, it seems like this guy knows what he's doing and kind of using <laughs> that, that position that he's in. Uh, okay, so that it sounds like a, it sounds like a porn setup or that. something, huh? <laughs> I've actually talked to him about it before because I had told him I was like, "You knew exactly what you were doing," and he's like, "Yeah, I'd be an idiot." So. Uh huh. So I guess in that situation, I figured out what kind of sex I like. Mm-hmm. But in that situation, like if, you know, if, if, if your husband did know about this, for example, or anyone in a relationship, that's kind of that initial point where it's like, okay, I know what's going on here and I can either remove myself from the situation, get a new massage therapist, or I kind of know, you know, that I'm basically putting myself at risk for, having sex with this guy 
Right, and that's what I put in the email. So there was one night, um, being honest here, I got high and then I went in and got my massage. And I thought to myself, you know, I need clear thinking, and that's what I did. And on that massage table, I even told myself, all right, you love your husband. What are you doing? Like, just stop. Because I didn't, it's not like I made any advances on him at this point. Um, I was just trying to shut my own brain down and, and be like, all right, you got to probably end seeing him. Like, that night I thought was going to be my last time I saw him. And then that's when he asked if he could rub my stomach. And he said, it, you know, it'll make you feel better and all this other stuff. And he's like, I can rub your pecs, too. And he went on and on about how good it is for your body. And I know that I'm, I mean, I knew what he was doing, and I still let him do it. And that's when it was it was pretty much over at that point. So then you guys started having sex, like, every week? Um. So what happened was... He, after that massage, I had asked him if he, if he would be willing to give me a happy ending the next time. Mm. Okay. So we'd already been about stuff like that and other clients that he's done that with. And he said, yeah. And so he messaged me uh, through Facebook and I told him, yeah, I definitely want to do this because he didn't know if I was sure or not. And he even told me, I don't he had it be my choice. So it's not that he was making the moves on me. It was actually kind of the opposite. And he said, I'm only going to do what you're comfortable with. You know, are you sure you really want to do this? And I said, yes, but I want to do it in a hotel and not in this place because I want to get caught. And so I offered him cash, $300 to come to a hotel and meet up with me and give me a massage there. He has his own, like, table and everything and does it on the side as well. So you paid so him separately that for that? At, in the hotel, I thought he was just... I thought it was just going to be, um, like, just fingering me, pretty much. Hmm. And that's what he started with, and then it led to him going down on me, and then it led to the bed, and that's when we had sex. So he kind of turned him into a prostitute by paying him, <laughs> yeah. in a way. Hello? 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 Oh. oh, can you hear us? Hello? Can you hear us? Oh, hello? Yeah, hello? Oh, sorry, I don't know what happened there. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so after this time that you pay him $300, he comes to this hotel, you guys have sex. Do you have sex like a bunch of other times after that? Yeah, so then I went in for my my appointment was that following week. And between then and the next appointment, he had just messaged me to see if I you know enjoyed it. And honestly, it was very awkward. Uh, it was really awkward sex. It's, I, I don't know. It just... It's, it just felt really weird. I couldn't get comfortable. And I said, yeah, I just don't, I just don't know. And so he had asked if he could still be my massage therapist. And I said, yes. And so I came to my next appointment and we had sex in the massage place. And now did this become just kind of like routine? Like every time you would go there, that would happen? Every single time. So how many, how long has this been going on? Um, it's not, it's pretty recent actually, probably the end of February. Okay. And so it started picking up. So we, we had sex again at the facility. And then after that is when he invited me over to his place. And I was working a job where, you know, it was busy season and we were working 14 hour days up to 16 hour days so there was so my husband knew I was working late I was never home from January until just a couple of weeks like two weeks ago and so I would go over to his house probably at, when I would leave work at 9 30 after being there since 8 in the morning and I would stay over at his house until probably 2 and 2 o'clock in the morning 
and we would have sex probably two or three times in that period. It was a lot of sex. So, I mean, another thing that's interesting is that you say that this saved your marriage. So, like, where, like, how, how do you feel that it saved your marriage? Okay, so <clears throat> there was such a big part of me that I just, I felt so lost with my own self. And hooking up with this guy, he is complete opposite of who my husband is. And he's more similar I guess to what I envisioned how I was, even though I know I'm not this way, but he's very affectionate. Um, he also, he knows exactly what he's doing and he gave me a lot of confidence in myself too, that I, I had lost. Um, I became really self-conscious after this happened because, you know, a big part of, you know, my, you know, everything just looks really deformed and it is an eyesore and people comment on it and say how gross it looks. And so there was a lot of confidence building that he gave me that I in turn took to my marriage. So after leaving his place or leaving the massage salon, I would come home feeling great about myself. I felt, I felt this spark of life come back into me and I was just all over my husband and just complimenting him and showing him affection and making the move to have sex with him. And so that's what sparked me to actually try harder with my husband, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I definitely understand that thought process. But are you still actively seeing the massage therapist? And if, if so, is the goal to eventually, I guess you could say, wean off of him and just try to kind of find this consistent spark with just your husband again without needing that secondary guy? Yeah, exactly. And there was a night that I went over to his house and this was when I knew, you know, my work hours were going to change and kind of go back to a semi normal, like a 50 hour week. And so I went to his house that night and I, I had every intention on breaking it off with him because he had even told me that he didn't have feelings for me. And so I kind of thought we were on the same page. And that's where things kind of changed a little bit because when I brought it up to him and said, you know what, I don't know what I'm doing with you. You know, I even told him, I feel like I'm using you just to get closer to my husband. And that's not really fair to you. I, I didn't know what his end goal was either. It's, he was hooking up with somebody that's unattainable to him. And I was just using him on the side because anytime I was available, he could see me. You know, so it's not like I had to try super hard to, to hook up with them. And that's when he told me that he did have feelings for me that night. And he was afraid to tell me because he didn't want me to break it off. So you guys are still technically seeing each other now? Yeah. Is there fear that if you do take the step to break it off that this guy might come out and say something or try to contact your husband? I thought about that and I, I've even talked to him about it. So I'm very open with him too. And he said that there's a lot of things about me that's not, I guess you can say quote unquote normal with other relationships he's had because I don't, I mean, I've talked to him about sex he's had with other people too. And I just, I'm just curious more than anything. I just want to know how all these girls like hook up with him and, and whatnot, and how I just want to know his plan on how he do, does it. And <clears throat> I, he said that he wouldn't in the fear that he would get hurt uh, physically. So I don't think he would. I've showed him a picture of my husband, and like I said, they're just complete opposite people. My husband, um, he goes to the gym three hours a day, which is kind of crazy, but he that's what he does. And then this guy, the massage guy, is skinny guy you know he's about we're we are about the same the same build i mean i think i've put on his sweatpants before so hmm so do you feel any sense of regret or I, I guess right now you're kind of getting the best of both worlds then i think it's kind of telling that they are such opposites as well um do, yeah. Yeah, do you feel 
I, I don't know. Do you feel like that's kind of fair? Would you ever tell your husband or, you know, does it, does it ever eat away at you at all? Oh, absolutely. Every day um, it does, especially when I'm going to bed. Um, yeah, I feel, I feel shameful more so. I don't want to say I regret it because I honestly, I don't think I do. Um, I wish I, I regret that. I feel that I put myself in a position where I've probably taken it too far and I regret maybe letting it get this far because now I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Um, I mean, honestly, I felt like at, at that point that night when I was going to break it off, I felt that I got what I wanted from him. And then it was when he expressed his feelings for me that made me, I don't know, I, I, I guess, want to do more with them but if i if he would have been on the same page and wanted to break it off with me that night too it would have stopped when was this but I, um it was the last so the second to last week of march so when was the last time you guys had sex wednesday when i had my appointment okay I mean, I don't know. I kind of see, I I think that you're just kind of enjoying, I mean, obviously correct me if I'm wrong, but it just seems like at this point you're kind of like, well, I'm kind of enjoying having this new sort of exciting relationship. You've known your husband for your entire life, basically. You guys have been together and you found someone mm -hmm. and it's nice to get attention from someone who isn't the same person forever. And I mean, you can get away with it and you know he seems to like you so that makes you feel good i don't know i, I just don't see how like not like i think if you went there with the intention of breaking it off i mean I'm, i don't know i'm just i'm from my point of view if i was yeah. doing this and and i would i'm on my way there to break it off and they were like oh i actually have feelings for you that would make it even easier for me if i was like whoa like i was not doing this to create some sort of relationship outside of my marriage. Like this was just like a strictly physical thing and it helped me and like, I'm good. See you later. You know what I mean? So do you think a part of you yeah. actually feels like you enjoy the new sort of relationship aspect more than just the physical aspect of it? Yeah. Right. And so that's where I think I've been going down because when I wrote that email to you guys, I really didn't feel much for him. And I also put up walls, so I wasn't open with him about anything else other than sex and talking about sex and other things we wanted to do to try. And so I put this mental barrier up so that I didn't have to get to know him. And it really was only sex. And then once he started talking, I learned more about him in the sense that a lot of girls that he's hooked up with are either married or engaged. And I wanted to, so the more he explained about where he was and he was with a girl who was engaged and he didn't know about it. And once he found out, I think that's where it, it kind of shut him off. So I felt like I could connect to him. When he started talking to me that night, I felt like I could connect to him on a level of you're hurt and in a bad place and I'm hurt and in a bad place because of what happened to me and what happened to you. And then that's when we started connecting on more of a emotional level, you could say. And it's the sense that, and I told him this and he said the same thing. He doesn't have any intention of breaking up my marriage. And I told him that I would never leave my husband for him. But at the same time, I'm also continuing this. And I don't know for what hmm. other than excitement and excitement. So you're really I, in the thick of this right now. Yeah. Just kind of kind of battling with the emotions. I mean, I, I won't pretend to know what marriage is like. I mean, I think I can understand that it's very difficult and communication is key. But have you ever expressed those original feelings that you had to your husband? The idea that maybe he was becoming a bit distant or you didn't appreciate or like the way he was handling your injury by 
maybe turning to alcohol, going out with friends. Did conversations like that ever happen? And do you feel like you gave him a chance to recognize that in himself and fix the situation? Absolutely. Absolutely. We talked about it a lot and it even got to the point and I, re- I very vividly remember the night where I asked him if he still wanted to be, be with me. And that's when he said, I'm going to try harder. I just don't know how to deal with this. And he's like, I don't like seeing you so upset and going through all this, but you know, the next night it's back out at the neighbors or out at a bar coming home and being hung over all the time when I needed help, you know, cause we still had a daughter and, you know, I was trying to take care of her while being in a wheelchair and that's, it's hard because marriage, it, it became more of just, we're just trying to get through life right now. And that's what probably made our marriage go south so fast. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, this is actually really interesting. I mean, I'm going to be honest, it, it's different. This is a very different type of conversation for us. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, it just, it just felt different kind of throughout, but I mean, I think it is interesting mm-hmm. that you're opening up about this. There's not necessarily, you know, a lesson learned yet. It's, it, it really is, uh, you, you know, still being right in this dilemma, you know, trying to figure this out. And I'm sure, mm-hmm. unfortunately, cheating or situations like this are common in a lot of marriages. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's interesting. And I think, I think yeah. what it comes down to is like, you have to keep it real yourself. And do you think that you're doing this for you or are you doing this for your marriage? Cause you're saying that it's helping your marriage, but it really seems like you're more so just kind of fulfilling this nice, like this, like gives you a nice feeling. And it is a fantasy of sorts. And you're literally, I mean, this guy, this massage therapist is like literally living as like a porn character. Of yeah, like, I let know. me become a massage therapist, bring some ladies into my, you know, office, whatever, and just go for it. Yeah. Like, is it actually helping your marriage or is it just making you personally a little happier? Okay. Okay. So those two kind of go hand in hand. And I'll, so the reason why my motive in the beginning was to kind of rediscover myself and find what I was missing to be happy. And there's characteristics that opening up emotionally to another guy brought out. And it made me get that passion back just to live again and, and just be more energetic and more open. So I became very open with my husband in turn, and we'd have these very in-depth, real conversations that were raw feelings and that brought us a lot closer but for me I needed to fulfill those missing pieces of myself before I could improve my marriage and my husband's even told me several times he's like I don't know what what changed but he said I've never loved you more than this and I feel so close to you right now and we're so connected but I can't tell him why that's very intense. And also, yeah. <laughs> you, you just kind of admitted it. You did say that opening up emotionally to another guy was kind of what helped you. So, uh, like, I know it maybe like the misconception of cheating, or like a lot of times people will say they cheat just because, whatever, I'm sexually attracted to this person, and we, it was, we were together at this specific time, we were drunk, whatever, something happened, we cheated. But it seems like a lot of cheating kind of does come from trying to fill some sort of emotional void and being able to connect with someone in a different way. Or like your husband even said, if, if, if he was on the other end of the spectrum, you know, if he was out there doing the same thing and you didn't know, I'm sure his story would be, my wife had the surgery, she became, you know, way more like depressed than usual and unhappy and she wasn't making advances toward me. And he could almost have very similar reasoning to do the same thing as you. Absolutely, and I would be able to understand his reasoning. Would you, though? So, you okay. <laughs> so here's the thing. Um, guys, I've talked to him about open relationships or, you know, a, a don't ask, don't tell kind of deal, and he shoots it down every single time. But that's where I am. Uh, I'm more of a free-spirited person, and I do have a lot of relationships with a lot of different guy friends. But, and I know that, you know, him and I have had to talk 
about that too because ever since I've changed, I just can connect better with the opposite sex. And I do have a lot of guy friends, but he's well aware of all of them except for this one. And I encourage him to be friends with, I told him before, I said, if you can be friends with another girl, I think you're going to get a better perspective in life. And she's going to be able to give you things on a, on a level that I can't because we don't connect on every level. No couple does. And so if you can be friends with somebody like that, I think it just makes you a happier person, or at least it does for me. Yeah, I, I mean, I hear you in, in that aspect, but I mean, as far as the cheating aspect where you're like, you know, this helped my marriage and you said that your husband said, hey, I haven't loved you more and like whatever. It seems like it did its job. So if that was the plan and it was your intention, like, yes, this is to fix my marriage, it helped me rediscover myself. It seems like you're in a better headspace as far as that goes. You you say that you have changed and you've done all, you know, you feel happier and all this stuff. And your marriage is fixed, I guess. Uh, so why the yeah. need to keep doing it? Yeah, and I, I knew you guys were going to ask that question. Um, it's I, I have a relationship with him now, and it's and that's exactly what I was afraid of happening. And that's what he. I even told this guy I wanted to make sure he was fine with me coming on this um, podcast and explaining this, even though it's anonymous. And he had told me he's fine with everything except for the fact that you, he knew I was going to be questioned about this and he thinks it would drive me away from him. Because I do, tell, I do talk to him and tell him how much I do love my husband, but I've also developed feelings for this guy in a way that's not... It's, I, I'm not in love with him, but I, I like him... I like his company and I feel that I'm helping him. I guess this is where my motive is. I feel like I'm helping him to learn how to rediscover love in his life too, so that he can be with somebody that, you know, is available and get over this barrier that he's put up because, and maybe that's what a connection is because I feel that he's helped me to get to the point that I'm at. And now I want to help him to get to the point where he's not so shut off dating and relationships because he hadn't been in one for three or four years it just seems like the closer you guys get the like i feel like you guys will develop a real relationship and that's what it sounds like he's yeah. not going to want to go anywhere he's gonna be like no i want to fucking be with you yeah exactly and i'm playing in dangerous territory right now because yeah, but I feel like even you know in the I back of your mind, like that's going to be the end goal. That's what's going to happen. If you guys keep spending time together, he says he has feelings for you, and you are in this weird position where you're like, I love my husband, but I still I like building this relationship with you. Eventually, you guys are going to get to the point where you're very serious, and it's going to be even harder to break it off. At this point, I think you're already past that point, and it's like there's no turning back now. You guys are kind of just you know, in it and just riding it out. So I think that to think moving forward – you know, you're trying to help this dude discover himself so he can go date other people. I don't see that happening. I see this dude wanting to be with you. And then, you know, I mean, I hate to be the one to say this. And like, obviously I'm not a, you know, I can't tell the future or anything, but it just seems like this could be a messy situation if this dude really wants to be with you and he'll do anything. And then he has this card mm -hmm. in his back pocket that he could just play and, you know, kind of mess things up for you. Fuck. I mean, I don't think about it that way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it's just like, that's how, that's kind of how I see it. Because, I mean, the way that you are explaining it to me, you're saying how this guy, he was the one who came out to you and said, like, hey, I have feelings for you. I don't think, yeah. I mean, and he said how he's done this before. You know, this is clearly different than those other times. The other, Or he would have just been like, all right, forget this. Like, it was a one-time thing, whatever. Um, but now it just seems like since you guys are just seeing each other all the time that eventually it might get to the point where it's serious and you both kind of want to just be able to live this double life, I guess like right. for you right now, it seems easy because well, not easy, but it just seems like doable because you're able to do it. You're supposed to see this guy. He's a massage therapist, blah, blah, blah. But for him eventually, you know, and I don't know this dude or what kind of guy he is or whatever, but 
you know, there are guys out there that are like, eventually they're like, all right, fuck this. Like, I don't want anyone else to be in the picture. Like I actually care about you and you care about me. Like, let's just fucking do this thing. But you know, I mean, that's just like a possibility. It could not go that way. He could be like, I'm cool with this. And like, you know, not take it any further and not try to get into a relationship or anything crazy. But you know, there is always that other path that could possibly happen, you know? Yeah. I mean, I get what you're saying, and I think maybe that's where my naiveness comes in because we've talked about this, and I he knows very well that I told him I would not leave my husband for him. Um, but I asked him, too, if he was going, if he was, because he knows I'm obviously still having sex with my husband, you know, and so, sometimes it's the same day. And I've asked him if he's hooking up with other girls just out of curiosity not that i care and he's like no i i don't want to do that and that's i guess where it was kind of weird because i thought he would want to do the excitement thing too but he he's more of like you know just i'm good with you but he did tell me that you know when you he said i'm i'll be i'll stay with hooking up with you and hanging out with you as long as you want you know and i'm just going to enjoy it and live for the moment so yeah, but that, I mean, that only of- goes so far, too. And I feel like he thinks he has the upper hand because he's not the one who's being cheated on. He's the guy that you go to. So technically, in his eyes, he feels like he has the upper hand because, I mean, you're like even if he knows that you're having sex with your husband, he still feels like he's got the upper hand because, like I said, you're the one going to him and you are your husband essentially is the one who is being cheated on. And it's not him. So it's like, all right, I'm a, a step above this dude. Yeah, I, I almost see this situation as like, you've obviously been through a lot, I think, with, with the surgery, with the injuries, everything with the doctors, uh, and how that would affect a marriage. That's obviously a lot. But, you know, I, I almost see it as like, the train kind of left the station and, you know, you missed it. You didn't get on it. Like, the train being that point where you could have realized you know, this, maybe this wasn't the right thing to do, but I see how it helped me grow emotionally. I see how it helped make me appreciate my husband more and help our relationship. And now I can cut it off. And if you can live with that and it helps your marriage, then sure, that can happen. I know you said you had a daughter in the mix. Obviously, you know, it's, it's, uh, it gets complicated, but it, it kind of seems like that train left the station a little while ago. And now, I mean, this just sounds like an affair at this point. It sounds like you guys are getting emotionally invested in each other to a point that yeah i don't i don't know how this ends i mean i've seen how it ends in movies and stuff and it's never that good yeah i I just want to like make sure that i mean listen it's your life you're gonna do what you want don't listen to me but uh moving forward if this is going to continue i think that it's only natural that human beings will develop a stronger relationship with someone and i think to think that he'd be like, all right, I'm done. I found someone else. I'm out of here. I think that's like not realistic. I think this dude actually wants to be with you. And, you know, I mean, luckily it's not, it it just started happening. Like you're only like a few months in, but if this went on for like a year or something, and at that point you were like, okay, this has gone on long enough. Like I'm over this. You're like, I'm done. And then all right, how is he going to react to that now? Because there was so much time that went by. We spent so much time together and we shared this like secret and this bond for so long. And, you know, how is, I don't know how he's going to react to that. Maybe he'll be super upset by it or maybe he'll, I don't know. It's just, it's a thing to think about, you know? Oh yeah. And I should probably think about it more. Um, Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I guess I, just assume that the fear factor is there so he's not he wouldn't do anything might you know he's even said he's like your husband could kill me you know and that's true so i guess in my mind i'm like he's not going to say anything so i feel safe with that but yeah i see what you mean by the more emotionally involved you get with somebody the crazier it gets the crazier people get too yeah eventually you know, this something, I don't know, something could happen, you know? Like, if he really wants to be with you that bad, especially on an emotional level, it's not just like you guys are having sex. Like, you guys are having conversations. You're spending all this time together. Clearly, you guys like each other more than just, like, 
friends with benefits and you said or secret something. before i think having that kind of secret with someone that inside thing that only you guys know is so powerful right it makes it a bond a bigger bond on that mm-hmm. aspect too yeah and that's true i mean he's even written me a poem that he submitted to to some school um and it was a pretty intense poem too do you have the poem on you yeah oh my god you want me to read it i would love to hear this poem sure okay hold on I like poetry. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, yeah, you do. I, I read your book. Um, all oh, right. thanks. Oh, my heart. <laughs> the, wind, the winds have changed on this defining hurricane that has surrounded me. They used to be so strong that any ship I was in, it would shatter it into tiny shards of memories. This hurricane casted me into freezing water, making me feel so numb to everything. I was stuck in its eye as it showed me my lost memories on its swirling walls. I've been swimming so long, afraid that any ship I got into would be doomed the same fate as the others. I kept swimming, making myself so numb to everything that when I did feel something, it was so foreign that I swam swam past it. Now that the winds have changed, I see a vessel in the dark. They threw me a line to hold on to it. I've been so afraid to pull back in fear of dooming them. The captain jumped from her ship to save me. Her warm embrace has brought peace to my worries. This foreign feeling feels so right with her. I hope these winds keep changing for the better. This warmth I feel with her, I pray it never goes away. This does not sound like the work of someone who's ready to walk away from this. Wow. Guy's pretty pretty good. good. <laughs> I was going to say, the guy's a poet. Uh, Wow. I've never written a poem for anyone. No, me neither. I, no, that's a lie. I've well, written a poem. It was so trash, lie. though. <laughs> but, wh- I mean, you don't see that as a sign of, holy shit, I'm in deep? Um, okay, so when I read his poem, I, I, felt like, I felt like I was doing my job. I don't, it's really hard to explain, but when I read it, and, and it's probably because of the mentality that I have about this relationship it's like, I, I guess I get, got a little validation that what I was doing was actually opening him up to starting to feel for people more and that he's not going to be in this dark place and shut his life out to relationships, that he's going to, that he's starting to open up to the idea of, of it. Yeah, I understand. Does that make sense? Yes, I think it makes sense. I mean, you know, for me, I think the mentality that I, try to have in my relationships and that I've learned over time, sometimes the hard way, is, you know, at the end of the day, I don't think you can be responsible for trying to fix or save someone and vice versa. And I think, yes, that sentiment's nice that through your relationship, he's able to help you with your marriage, you're able to help him open up to relationships. But at the end of the day, you you can't rely on another person to teach you that. I think you need to find that within yourself. I think there's a lot more going on, you know, with each of you as individuals that I don't think you're going to be able to necessarily fix each other. I think that comes from within. Um, I'm not saying fix. I mean, open up like you're, like you're hitting that, that wire that's going to trigger those emotions. So I feel like we all need somebody to inspire us for that, for that trigger of emotion you, you know you want to find yourself but you can't do it alone and not talk to anybody or at least for me it's that way um so for me to feel what i needed to feel i needed to have somebody trigger that that wire for me so i could get on the right path and so yeah i feel like he did that for me and i suppose that's what i thought i was doing for him mm-hmm. and again I, I think i can see that i guess once it's triggered i mean what you know when does it end if it's been triggered at what point do you you know take something that i guess could have helped you in your own way and not let it become something that hurts you and i mean obviously we don't have the answers i think you're you know it is a unique situation i think it was interesting for us not really knowing where this conversation would go and just being able to have a conversation like this and kind of understand the mindset and and your situation and like i said before i mean this is probably 
a common dilemma that a lot of you know married couples face uh you know at some point i just think the the biggest thing and the most important thing uh is that you gotta just be real with yourself and be like am i doing this for my marriage or am i doing this for me and if you're doing it for your marriage that's one thing a lot of people wouldn't even agree with it on that level but if you're doing it for you then you can't tell yourself that you're doing it for your marriage because then you're just like lying to yourself you know what I mean? So if you, you really got to find out what you're in this for and then eventually it this has to come out at some point. And it's either I'm not happy in my marriage or I do love my husband and you know this I'm I'm either going to you're either going to have to tell your husband like hey listen we either got to open this up cuz I still care about you or I did this thing and let's deal with it or you know, the other thing is just kind of like, just, I'm not happy in my marriage. Like I love my husband, but I'm not happy married and then break that off and then just kind of figure it out from there. But this double life thing, I don't, I mean, it sounds stressful as hell, but, uh, yeah, well, stressful. yeah. So I don't think it's like but- sustainable. It's very new, but I don't think sustainable, you know? Because, you know, I'm not saying you're a terrible person. Like, you sound like a very nice person. And to have this weighing on your brain for an extended period of time, like, eventually that's going to drive you insane and you'll start, like, shaving your eyebrows or doing some crazy stuff. You know what I mean? Like, so you don't want to do any of that. You want to just, you know, uh, eventually you're going to have to get to the point or just think about the, the end goal and, you know, really try to find out the reason that you did this, started doing it, and while you're still doing it, and then just kind of run from it th- from it run with it from there and just figure it out. Right, and that's kind of where, I mean, like what you just said, you can love somebody, I love my husband, but I'm working on me feeling like I'm back in love with him, and I know he feels, he was able to fall back in love with me a lot faster than I feel like I'm able to fall back in love with him. Yeah, the passion is is there, we actually started having a lot more sex, and I'm more affectionate towards him as well, but at the same time, once that's over and, you know, we'll have these great conversations, but I'm still working on getting back to the sense of, I love you so much, but I'm still working on getting back in love with you. And I, you know, I had suggested couples therapy, um, but it, you know, it was something that he didn't agree with. And that's, uh, and maybe that's why I'm still continuing this, but I don't have a real reason to give you as to why I'm still doing what I'm doing. And the end result for me would just to fall madly back in love with my husband and being together for so long, sometimes that's a lot harder to do. It's easier said than done. Totally. And look, it's not even, it's probably tough to say, but maybe that's not even the right answer. Maybe that doesn't need to be the outcome. Maybe, maybe it doesn't make sense to stay with your husband in the long run. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, on, only you're going to know, you know, what you want. And, you know, we, we do appreciate you coming on and, and sharing this. Obviously this is a a huge thing to share. Uh, but you know, we, we do wish you luck. And like Joe said, it's just, it's, it's a lot to handle and I think have on your shoulders. So we do hope that, you know, you're able to find the direction that you want to go in and that you're, you know, able, able to pursue that. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll see how it goes. If not, you'll hear about me on the news. (laughs) <laughs> don't say that but <laughs> um but or or just hey keep us posted send us another email where you know we're happy to see where this goes yeah and that's you know i appreciate you guys having me on the show i'm a huge fan um and joe i watched all your stuff like to get me through you know i handled things in more of a you know a comedy sense of you know shaking it off and just laughing so that's when I started picking up your stuff and yeah, it was hard to email you because you know, you're going to see the worst side of me. So there you have it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, you know, I appreciate you saying that, but also at the same time, like if there's one thing I learned from doing the show, it's, you know, you don't take all these emails and everything you hear as face value. This is just one small part of someone's character in their life. You know what I mean? So it's, You don't have to worry in that regard. Like I said before, like, I don't think you're a terrible person. Obviously people get themselves into situations or whatever, but you know, the that's, I would just encourage you to think about 
you know, the end goal and not just being like, I'll just fucking deal with this tomorrow or some shit. You know what I mean? Just like really think about where this is going and you'll try to, you'll figure it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No. And this is, this has opened me up because I was looking at maybe his feelings from a different standpoint, other than what you guys are interpreting it from a bystander. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank you for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. All right. Thanks guys. No problem. Have a good day. You too. Bye. All right, before we get to our final thoughts, let's get to the sponsors here. The first one we have is Hims, which is a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, sexual wellness, and other things for men. Uh, thanks to science, baldness can be optional. Um, Hims connects you with real doctors and medical-grade solutions to treat hair loss. Uh, the fact is 66% of men are losing their hair by age 35. And uh, with Hims, we have well-known generic equivalents to name brand prescriptions to help keep your hair. Uh, no waiting room, no awkward doctor visits. You could save hours by going to forhims.com, and it is so easy. You just answer a few quick questions, a doctor will review and prescribe you. Uh, products are shipped directly to your door, which is very convenient. Uh, my listeners can get a trial month of Hims for just $5 today right now while supplies last. See the website for full details. This would cost hundreds if you went to the doctor or pharmacy. Uh, go to forhims.com slash OPL. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash OPL. One more time. Forhims.com slash OPL. Greg, what else we got? We've also got good old Dollar Shave Club. Mm. And I'm not going to brag, but I've definitely gotten more compliments on my nice trim beard since joining just because it's so easy and convenient to stay neat and trim and uh you do look pretty neat and trim oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> and good news even if you don't have a beard dollar shave club is now more than just razors they have everything you need to get ready in the bathroom so dollar shave club has i mean you name it shampoo conditioner body wash toothpaste hair gel even a wipe that leaves your tush feeling clean i said it tush first of all that sounds amazing butt wipes though basically yeah which uh are fire I, they're amazing they're amazing you you can't go back to anything else after that can't uh they have an amber and lavender calming body cleanser it smells amazing good luck finding something like that anywhere else and uh all dollar shave club products are made with top shelf ingredients and it won't break your budget and that's important to me as someone who you know, cares about their ingredients and what I put in and on my body. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's a great way to save money on all of these products. For just five bucks, you can get Dollar Shave Club's Daily Essential Starter Kit. It comes with the body cleanser, the One Wipe Charlies, which are the tush cleaners, uh, then the shave butter and the Six Blade Executive Razor, which just makes you feel like a boss when you use it. And uh, you can keep everything coming to your door for just a few bucks a month. Uh, and they'll even throw in the shampoo and the toothpaste, anything else you need. And you can check it all out at dollarshaveclub.com slash OPL. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash OPL. Mm. Fire. All right. So uh, the psyche of someone having an affair. Yeah. So it's it's unfortunate that I have to like say this, but I think the problem she has is a problem that a lot of people have when it comes to certain things, like a lot to a lot of things. Just a, this mentality of like, like you find an excuse and then you just hold on to that. Yeah, and to it makes justify you feel, your yeah. actions that and it just you makes probably you probably know aren't right. Or exactly. not going to it's end like, well. It's like, oh no, this could be perceived as me helping my marriage because it, it, my husband's happier now because yeah. I'm happier. But you, but it, yeah. but well, you're not good doing luck, it. For good your luck marriage. telling your husband how you fix the marriage. But not even, it's not even about that. It's it's about just like because if it was about the husband, that's why I said what I said. Where if it was about the marriage, right? And I I do believe that there are people. I mean, we've seen it. It is possible to love someone. And also want to have sex with other people. I think that's just like natural, obviously. Yep. The, you know, the cheating part is just that you both agreed not to do it and you did it. You're not, nah, it's fucked up. But the, 
the idea that you are doing it saved your marriage you're doing this for your marriage i think it's just like not true like i think it's completely past that the the reason why you're doing it is because it just makes you feel something you haven't felt in a long time it's only natural that being with someone for an extended period of time you start to feel like all right i'm not special anymore Mm -hmm. which you aren't let's face it you're not you're, uh, I'm used to you. I appreciate you, and I like. To, I want to spend my life with you, whatever. But uh, it's not that original spark. Like you, you lose that, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she's getting that from this guy. It's very new, and you know, obviously, she has a reason to see him. There's no reason to be suspicious if you're her husband. She's in a good spot in that regard. But now that this dude comes out and it's like, yo, I got feelings for you. Like, that should have been the telltale sign of like, all right, I'm done with this. Because I'm not trying to get into another relationship with someone. Or like, yeah. I'm not trying to do that. Like, I was just, we were just fucking just because that was nice. And like, you know, whatever. We're having our fun. But to continue it after that. And she almost mentioned that as a point where she was like, oh, okay. That, now I'm going to stay. Because he was interested in me. Exactly. For the most part, I feel like people would have been like, oh, fuck out of here. You know what I mean? That's yeah. like with even with like friends with benefits. Like it's like a cliche that when you're friends with benefits, someone's going to catch feelings. And then when you do, you get the fuck out of there. Yeah. With this, she's like, oh, fuck that. I'm in. Yeah. So it's like you went the complete opposite By way With him saying that, it may have well been him looking her in the eyes and saying, this won't end well. Like this is not going to end well it's, for anyone. Yeah, I really don't think it is. Eventually, her husband's going to have to find out. It, I mean, it's... Well, it depends what kind of guy that, that that guy is. I mean, I think, like I said, I don't think this woman's a bad person at all. I think eventually she's going to have to tell him just to make herself feel better. Yeah. Um, well, and- how do you live with that is just, that's one question. That That's just hard. And like I said at the end, then maybe she shouldn't be married to her husband. And like, that's yeah. okay too. Yeah, that's fine. Like, it's, that's totally fine. But, and, but I also, I know that she probably wouldn't be like, I'm not going to end my marriage for this fucking guy. And it's not about the guy. It's about the idea of the guy. Yeah. That there is someone else that you want to have sex with and that you want to hook up with other people. If that's the case, dude, then you just can't be with your husband. Yeah. Or at least like spend some time apart or just be open and be like, yo, I, I just need to, like we've been together since 16. Like I want to just get out there. There is that element too I forgot about. I mean, talk about not being special anymore, like you said. You yeah. Know. It's, it's like, you know, the ins and outs of special, but it's, yeah. I mean, since 16 to be with one person yeah, and there, we won't say the exact age, but she's older now. <laughs> right. She's got a lot older, but it's just like, you know, I, I, you know, the only thing that's bad, like I said, is just this mentality of like, you find an excuse and, and this goes for like, everyone does this from time to time. It's not necessarily about your relationships or cheating or anything like that, but other things where it's like, you find an excuse like, Oh, I'm doing this for this reason. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, you're not. You know what I mean? Like that's just, it's like those videos of people like, Oh, I'm giving a hundred dollars to a homeless person. It's like, okay, I can see how you're holding on to that as like, this is my intention. Like I want to help homeless people, but I also want a million views on this video. Exactly. And that's like, that's your true intention. Yeah. It's like, I hope this is an anonymous donation or anything. Right. It's like, you're doing it because you want people to feel a certain way about you. You know what I mean? And it comes from a selfish point of view. This has passed the point where you can convince me that it's not a selfish thing. Totally. It's not about your husband. Like I said, like that, that train left the station a long time ago. There's a complete disregard for the husband at this point. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, the reason why I didn't say that on the phone call, because I'm not trying to like kick this woman while she's down. Like she's in a tough spot, like whatever. Mm -hmm. She's like dug herself into the hole, but you know, it's a tough spot nonetheless. And I don't think she's a bad person. It happens, whatever. But there, the reality of it, there's a complete disregard for the husband. Clearly we don't care about his feelings. We don't. You know, the only thing we care about is is me. I'm mm. if I'm happy, then I can be happy in my marriage. Like that's not really how it. Like if I do this to make me happy, then it'll be my husband will be happy because I'll be happy in my marriage. It's like that's not really how. That's not you saving your marriage. That's yeah. you or making that, yourself happy. That's not happy. the way to do it. You know, right? You're just holding on to this idea of like, oh, if if I'm happy, then my marriage is a little better because I'm in a better mood. That's a, that's not making your marriage. It's just like you trying to make yourself happy, which is totally fine. But again, 
this is something that needs to be said and out there. You can't, like, this is coming from a, I need to make myself happy. And you're supposed to be selfish. I believe you're supposed to be selfish when it comes to relationships and everything. You are supposed to make yourself as happy as possible. Yes. But you also aren't supposed to do it behind people's backs. Right. Exactly. You know, uh, I'm, you know, whatever. Yeah. Supposed to. It happens, like I said. But the fact that I can tell that this woman isn't a bad person and she's not malicious and whatever, I think eventually she's going to get to the point where she's like, this is killing me. I need to do something about it. And Well, she. I think she has a false sense of reality where she thinks she can break this off anytime she wants. And you kind of you know, told her, her like, that's probably not the reality. Like you yeah, probably can't just go to this guy it. and say, this is over. I don't think she could bring herself to do it. And I don't think that guy is just going to let that gonna happen. Take easily. that lightly. Yeah. yeah. And like, if you're listening guy, massage therapist guy, uh, and she does do that, you got to let her go. Yeah. But you know, it's, it, I mean, I'm not going to tell the dude what to do. I mean, he, I don't know how deep in they are together, but I do know that, there are a lot of people that, like I said before, he feels like he has the upper hand. That's why he's not intimidated by the husband because he is the guy that's getting everything. He has she's, nothing to lose right she's now. She's going behind his back doing the husband dirty to get to him. She's not doing him dirty at all. Yep. So what happens when she does and she goes, yo, I'm out. Like, right. I'm done. Like I, this, I wasn't trying to be in a relationship with you. Now he's hurt. He's like, yo, wait, huh? So now he doesn't have the upper hand. That's why everything's cool now. But what happens when the tables turn on him? He could react in a way. It was like, yo, uh, you know what? Fuck that. Like, I'm telling your husband. Yeah. Because I'm going to be with It gets so you. messy. It's insane. Yeah, it's, it gets very messy. And but. I hope, I, I I genuinely hope that doesn't happen for her. I do hope that she figures it out. And, you know, whether she tells her husband or not, that's completely up to you. No judgment there. But eventually it's going to come to the point where you either have to end it and talk about it or just end it and then just don't talk about it and just move forward away from this guy. Yeah, agreed. Or... If you love the guy, which I don't know if she does, I don't think she does from what she said. She might. Those massage therapists, then leave your husband and go with this guy. Like, there's just a bunch of things. Like, you just, but you got to make a move. You got to make a move. Yeah. You can't play five different playbooks at the same time. No. Let's go. It's not going to work. Also, just, we've talked about this before, how important communication and openness is. And I felt, while she was speaking, I felt so pumped up for some reason. Like, I want to, like, call the polyamorous person we spoke to i want to call i won't say who they are because i don't know when this episode will come out this season but you know spoke to someone else someone who's very confident and open in in a relationship like those people like uh, you just respect their communication and openness and the ability to say like i like if i'm going to be in a relationship i'm going to be in an open relationship and that's how it is and their partner accepts and agrees with it and boom marriage seems good for those people uh where someone like this who she said she tried to express that to her husband about open relationships it's clearly something she probably would be okay with yeah but she's got but i don't know if she would accept that well that's why i said would you because if she found if her husband came to her and was just like yo while that was happening like i was cheating on you like how are you really you're really gonna take that and be like all right i'm fine or are you gonna be like well i was fucking cheating on you too like yeah if you're you have to just have to be sure. Like I said, it's all like all comes back to I'm a firm believer in like you can never lie to yourself. Know your true intentions. Don't like fake or make up a reason why. Like you know why you're doing certain things. You know why. Like you really don't run from it. Like just know and own that. Because if you start lying to yourself, eventually you're going to get yourself into a situation like this where you're kind of like, fuck, I don't know what I'm doing now. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. This is a very easy situation to get into and a very difficult one to get out of. Yeah. I think that's just cheating in general or, you know, just harboring those type of lies, not being honest with your partner. You know, it might be easy to do in the moment, but it's not going to be fun in the long run. Yeah. Uh, wow. That's, she's in a tough position. I, I don't know. It's tough, 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 tough. Um, but yeah, that's it. Uh, <laughs> you guys could follow me on Twitter at Joe Sanagato and hit our uh, website, OPLshow.com slash contact. Send us an email if you think that you have something that could be part of the show. And if we feel the same way, we will reach out, schedule something, and get you on here. You can find me at Greg Dybeck. You can find the show at OPL Show. Please leave a rating and review on iTunes. And uh, that was your love therapy session with joe and greg there you go
Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.